Hello everybody, welcome to a new video, Jane Speed Shop. So today I'm going to start uh, to put a different transmission in my W201 diesel. So this is my uh, 1986 uh, 190 2.5 diesel, so 5 cylinder. Uh, it's an automatic car and the transmission is bad. So uh, the transmission has had to have some uh, cooling fluid in the past because the radiator was leaking with the previous owner. They flushed everything, but the transmission is not, uh, yeah, it's getting worse uh, by the day. So the thing is, when it's warm, it starts to slip. So it's when I do a long distance drive and the oil is pretty hot, then uh, and I want to stop and get accelerating again, it slips. So I already had to plan to change uh, the transmission so uh, for a 5 speed, so that's what I'm going to do. So today, we're going to put this transmission in. So this is a 722.6. Uh, the exact number is 626, so it's a transmission from a 320 CDI. It came out of an S-Class from 90, 1998 or something. So um, what I've done is uh, I did a little bit of service in this transmission. So uh, looked at all the solenoids, tested everything, uh, put new filters in the valve body, checked, just checked it. And I drilled the hole from the 3-4 flare bigger. So that's what you do when you have an off gear. You can reduce the slip in this transmission. That would not really happen with this uh, 2.5 diesel with very low torque. But in the future I want also want to change the engine. So it's just to be sure. So, uh, both this transmission, including the, tr the truck converter, of course. So, um, put, of course, the new connector in it, because they're always leaking, and this one was also leaking. So, I have a custom transmission mount from a friend of mine. He makes these, so if you're interested, uh, just ask me. Uh, for the rest, yeah. Let's go. So, cars going on the bridge. So, I hope you can see it a little bit. But I already put the off gear unit over there. Um, got a shifter already connected because I put all the uh, stuff in it. I got the screen in here, same place I had on the 19 V12. So, this shifter will fit straight into the position of the old one. Um, and I got, of course, the a speed sensor connected already and the throttle position sensor. I will show you the throttle position, how that works. So for the rest, um, I don't need a lot. I don't have any flippers on the steering wheel. Maybe later, but not for now. So, throttle position sensor. This sensor is on a lot of cars. I will put the part number below the video. I think it's on... Yeah, it's also on the 220 CDI's. We also on the V8's, the E430 W210 models. It just came a lot of cars. So this connector that is standard on the off-gear controller will fit straight away on this sensor. So it works straight away. So I made an adapter because on the, I know on the turbo diesels you can mount it somewhere in here. But in this 602 that's not possible. So yeah, we do it this way. So this is normally the connection that is used to uh, give the transmission the signal that he, you are uh, getting a lot of more throttle, but that old stuff that did, did not really work on this car anymore. So there's also a vacuum line, that stuff has, uh, I'm also going to remove. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So this is giving my 0 to 100 percent throttle. So I've got a lot of stuff removed. I got the uh, exhaust off, the oil lines are also over there. Drive shaft, or uh, axle, uh, sensor axle, how you want to call it. That's all off, so you can see transmission, everything is con disconnected. So plug disconnected, the speedo, this is for the backup light, I think. Uh, there's a throttle cable going to the transmission, and there is somewhere up there is a vacuum line that's going to a connection here. So the next, what I need to do is I have to disconnect all the bolts from the bell housing, and there are six bolts holding the uh, torque converter to the uh, flywheel. So, little update transmission is off. Whole transmission is over there. New transmission is over here. So, it was a hustle. But 
7226 from an uh, 722626. So this is from a 320 CDI W220. The thing is, that bell housing is also from a six cylinder, an OM648, I think. A very big torque converter will not fit. So what I now have is a bell housing from a four cylinder included with a torque converter from a four cylinder because that one will fit in the original uh, flywheel otherwise it will not fit so you cannot fit that bell housing on that engine it is from an inline six engine but it will not fit um, so the, from a four cylinder it will, it will fit on this OM602 you cannot fit the big torque converter in a smaller housing that will fit this OM602 so I don't know how some people do it but this is a small torque converter I think this transmission bell housing and torque converter is coming from a OM or an M111 so an M111 four cylinder um, so yeah 580 newton meters transmission so a big one from a this is from a 626 which is also behind V8s but the bell housing will not fit so this bell housing will now fit the engine with small torque converter. So I left the oil pump in because the numbers are the same. So the numbers on the big transmissions and the small transmission have the same oil pump. So I'm going to put the transmission in. So it is the next day. Forgot to film everything, but where am I now? So drive shaft is in, exhaust is back on, isolation back on. The transmission mounts completely in. Needed to modify it a little bit, of course, but this, because this transmission is normally for a manual. It is uh, more to the front. So it's in. Shifting rod is in. Uh, modify the oil lines. So these two need to go. This is the speedo cable. This is the electronics from the gearbox. So I got a bio bolt in here. Hose from 25 centimeters. Connected to the oil line. I hope you can see it. The oil line is going to the front. The other one is going back Also here a connection with the bio bolt into the transmission. So this is M14 So I think the original is M12 or M10 So otherwise it will not fit So for the rest, this is all underneath the car. I leave the cover off because I want to see if anything is leaking I don't think so, but we never know the only thing I need to put in the transmission now is the oil dipstick and uh, plug, but I have to drill a hole in there to get it through. So I had to do it before, but yeah, it's already in now. So um, yeah, I'm going to drill a hole, or I can take the other one and put it over the top. I have to have a look. So maybe I'm going to do that. Wire did put the wire over the transmission. This is in the footwell of the driver's side. Behind here, where now the black cable is going to the outside, this is where the transmission cable is going inside from the old transmission. You will find this connector on it. It has four connections on it. It does two things. There is a starter lockout on it and there's a backup light on it. So this cable going uh, from this side, it's going in on the left side where normally you, you put your foot on. There it's just behind it. So there is another cable coming in, there normally are two in there. That one is also going to the transmission separately, that is for your kick down switch. I got that cable out because I don't want any, uh, how you say that, uh, short connections on it. So I cut it off in the, in the switch. I leave it there because you can also connect this switch to the off gear. To just off gear, uh, let it switch when you press it. So I'm not going not sure if I'm going to do that, but that's why it's still there um, This wire the the thick orange wires there are two thick orange wires in it. They are uh, are a purple a violet white and Fully violet violet. That's the starter lockout. So you just have to solder them together and That's what I did the other two wires in my car, so you always have to check your own uh, wiring, of course, for the colors. This one is gray, yellow, and the other one is black, violet, red. That one is for your uh, reverse light. So if I have now connected it to the back side, you cannot see it, but 
the wires are over there the, that I used. There's a connection in the back of the uh, of the of the uh, gear uh, selector that you can connect, and then your reverse light will work again. So that's it. So I have to go to wire up everything in here and put it nice and tidy away. And then I'm going to build the panels all back. And then we're going to do a test drive. Okay, so I'm driving in a car now. Um, what I did off camera is already bleed out the transmission of air. So it completely empty. I put five liters of oil in it uh, through the dipstick. Then most of the time around that number, four or five liters, the oil will flow over your dipstick because it's full. Then you start up the car. You will put it in every gear, of course you're going to look if there's no leaks. Put it in every gear, foot on the brake. I will always put it on the bridge so the wheels are up, so it can flow some oil. Then you're going to measure the oil level with the engine running. There's a big possibility you don't have any oil level in your gearbox. If that's the case, stop the engine, put another liter in it, a liter or two, how much you can put in. Then you're going to start it up again and you do the same thing again. Uh, at a certain point you will have a level around 20 degrees Celsius. You'll stop and you're going to drive the car just like I did doing. So I already drove yesterday off camera and I put the values in that I normally do in a V8 car. So I only used off gear on V8 or V12 cars so they have more power than this car. So the thing that I did wrong is of course I'm now driving in fifth gear, uh, 62 kilometers an hour. And I already have 26% throttle position. If I do that in a V8, my station wagon for example, then I only have 5% throttle position. So, and if you now want to accelerate, and you're very fast above 60 to 70% throttle position. So, the thing is that the car will go shift up and down uh, because it sees a very high throttle position and it calculates the shift speeds also to the engine load. So yesterday I took a lot took me a lot of time to get a new setup in the in the off gear for lower so that it's not, not shifting back. So and I already mentioned now or I already seeing now if I have a lot of throttle position it still wants to shift back. Okay the shifts are still hard you can feel that but uh, that's fixable. But it's 100% it's better than the last time I drove. So, uh, what I'm now going to do is uh, I just tested the car. Also, what I had yesterday was a lot of vibrations because some mounts were hitting the side of the, of the body. I have, of course, my exhaust mount hitting my transition mount. So, don't panic straight away when you have it underneath the car go have a look what's the problem because I have a very limited space with this transmission in this tunnel and it's hitting nothing so it's just very good to me so the only thing I don't have of course now is my speedo working um, but I have a kilometer counter on this one and it's it's also skipping my speed I have found a guy on the internet that's going to make a very nice speedo for here so I'm going to wait for that, it's a digital one. But for now I'm very pleased, it drives very good. So, um, yeah, that's up till this point. So what I'm going to do now is uh, let the car come up to temperature another time. So this is the second time to 85 degrees, 80 degrees. Then I'm going to measure the level and have a look at so if it's okay. Put the car up in the lift. Have a look if everything is leak free and then my panels can go back on but uh, before that i have to do a service on the engine so we're going to oil change and uh, oil filter fuel filter because i did not do that but uh, since i had the car so i want to do that new air filter in there and there's also the kilometer uh, cable of the speedo cable that i have to remove i have to put it in somewhere else uh, or just get it out or put it somewhere that it cannot hit the engine. Also there's a vacuum system on the f uh, fuel pump. I'm going to remove that part. I think it's separately for the transmission. I now blocked that line off but everything that should not be in there should be removed. 
So um, I hope you have some. Uh, how you say that? You can do something with this info in this video. If there are any questions, I always forget something. Just uh, ask me. So no problem. So the thing that I learned from this, I have a few transmissions here that I still had the belief that um, a later six-cylinder line transmission, so I used an S320 CDI transmission, I think that's behind a 648, I think it's behind a 648, it's a 626 number, that it will not fit this OM602, so it will just not bolt on. So now I used uh, the housing from a uh, V12, so the housing is from a V12, but the bell housing is from an inline four cylinder that's behind an M11 engine, M111. Uh, also needed to use the smaller torque converter because it, the big one would not fit in the, uh, in the bell housing of the four cylinder uh, bell house. The second thing was that the torque wicker torque converter was not fit in the flywheel of the OM602. So I think there are some differences. If people really know how it is, or how this sits, so I think an OM603 does not have this big flywheel. So there's a thing I don't I'm not sure. So if you know, tell me how it uh, which bell housing fits on which engine. It's very helpful for people and uh, do some comments below the video. So don't forget to subscribe to my page. I'm going to do more from these kind of videos all from this car. And uh, yeah, also have a look on my website, jamespeedshop.com is over here. And uh, don't hesitate to ask. So thanks for watching and see you for the next one. Bye bye.